totally a cover buyer, 100%. Hey folks, it's Abby and today I'm going to be going through some of the prettiest, most beautiful covers on my TBR. I've separated these into three piles. One is accidentally a theme that I didn't realise. One is just really beautiful intricacies and the other is beautiful block colours. So I'm going to start off with the block colours. First up we have Vox by Christina Dalsha. This is a dystopian fiction where women can only speak 100 words a day and then if they speak any more they get electrocuted. So I really need to read but I just love. Just very plain, very simple but also very evocative. <sighs> Similarly but with a little bit more detail we have The Gilded Ones by Namina Fauna. This is a YA fantasy book where if you bleed red then you're normal but if you bleed gold then you're exiled from the community and a lot of these girls who bleed gold and have been exiled decide to fight back. This is a beautiful illustration of a girl on the cover. Like I adore all of the jewellery, I adore the... I don't know if this is face paint or sc scarring, I'm not sure. I'll know in the future, but I adore that. I adore the jewellery that she had in her hair. However, just this block colouring with like the, the fade into yellow is absolutely stunning, along with the sprayed edges. It's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. <laughs> and then we have my accidental theming. Uh, just two books in this one as well. The first one is The Book of Mirrors by Io Cirovici, Broken Glass. I mean, I'm assuming it's a broken mirror. Uh, and then the one that I realise apparently I have a theme is Amari and the Night Brothers by B.A. Alston. <laughs> this is a middle grade fantasy where a young girl's brother goes missing and she is determined to find him and I believe she ends up learning how to wield magic. And as you can see, broken glass. So apparently I have a theme. So that's those four done. Two of block colours and two of broken glass. The last six to make up this ten are all detailed, beautiful, intricate covers. So, I have two that have red theming and then the rest are bluey green theming. So we'll start with the red ones. First one is Rivers of London by Ben Aronovich and this is a adult fantasy about a kind of police detective in a fantastical world. The details of the London on the map I, I think is really gorgeous. I don't know if this is accurate, but it's definitely very interesting and I really like it. And then the other red one is The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco. This is a translated fiction from Italian, written in I think the 80s, and it's set in the 1300s in Italy and it's kind of like a Christie mystery. Like obviously this is playing off of the title, I don't know how much that works into the book itself, but the thorns of the roses there, I love how those entwine around the title. And then leading into bluer tones, we have some slight green going into blue. So we've got The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. This is a YA fantasy that plays with classics like Frankenstein, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, all of that. And this has so many intricacies around everything. It's just pretty. Tell me I'm wrong. Then one that most of you won't have heard of is Smiler's Fair by Rebecca Levine, which is book one of The Hollow Gods. I picked this up for the cover, and when you just look at it, it's like, okay, right, fine. Like, golden accenting on the moon, for, fine, whatever, and a bird there. But looking at the cloud detailing, it's gorgeous. It's so beautiful. And the sky up here as well. Mm, so pretty. I don't know truthfully too much about this one. It's about a moving carnival and fantastical elements. This is all I know. Then we have The Muse by Jessie Burton. This is a historical fiction and again just the intricacies of the florals combined with what I'm assuming are different points of the story, so some form of snake, a typewriter, paintbrush, guns, perfume bottles. And last but by no means least is The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. So this is an adult historical fiction which follows a young widow who was quite happy to be widowed from an abusive partner who then discovers that the Essex Serpent is apparently active again. She decides to go looking at it, uh, looking for it, and another young man who is quite dashing is also looking for it. The golden detailing on all of the flowers entwined with the body of the serpent is so gorgeous and the body of the serpent's been done in a way that it kind of looks like tiling like um mosaic in like ancient roman uh works so it's just it's just so gorgeous it's just so gorgeous 
Let me know in the comments down below folks what your favourite book cover is. These aren't all of mine, they're just my favourites off of my TBR shelves. I have so many more favourites on my red shelves. If you like the video please do hit like and all of my links will be down below in the description as always so that includes my book Twitter, my bookstagram, my goodreads and my book blog and also if you want to see some more from me please do hit subscribe and I will see you tomorrow. Bye!